At the start of this year, I was running a workshop on sustainable innovation inspired by nature. This workshop was for master students in product design, and it was part of a bigger assignment from the school, which had a special requirement. The students had to project themselves 50 years from now and create two radically different designs that were solving the same problem. Naturally, the students had to create a scenario to imagine the society from 2070. And in order to create two very different solutions, they thought they would create two extreme scenarios. One would be a utopia, and the other one a dystopia. The day they presented their designs and the process, they concluded that they had actually ended up creating two dystopias. Now, this is a problem, because if designers cannot imagine a better future for us, then we're in pretty bad shape. I don't blame them, though. This is something that we're all struggling with. For one, failure is easier to imagine. Failure we know we can achieve. Success, however, requires a lot of effort, a lot of imagination and creativity. And it involves a lot of uncertainties as well. Creating a positive vision and sustaining it in the face of adversity requires courage and grit. If you look around you, the news, the movies and series, a lot of the media we're exposed to is playing on our fears, stimulating our primitive survival instincts, our lizard brain, instead of inspiring us and creating a positive mindset. We need to change our mindsets to create better designs. And for that, we need to tell better stories. We need narratives that focus on what can be done, on positive visions and possibilities, rather than painting how bad things are or could become. Along the same lines, trends have received an incredible amount of focus and have a tendency to decide what we invest in and what we design for. Somehow, along the way, it seems we have forgotten how to think critically and question those trends. And more importantly, ask, what future do we wish for? What is the future you want to see? You have to design for this. Because if you don't, trends become self-fulfilling prophecies rather than framing how things could evolve. And many trends depict a future that we don't even want. So question trends, tell better stories, design the future you dream of. We are all designers. There is a famous designer, Viktor Papanek, who said that we're all designers because the mere act of planning for a desired goal is at the heart of the design process. We all have the responsibility and ability to design the future we would like to live in. And to do so, to be effective designers of the future, we need to hone our empathy skills. Empathy is a muscle that we need to train more and better. It allows us to better understand the effects of what we do on the rest of the system we belong to. Empathy allows us to understand our place in our ecosystem. It allows us to relate to others and to our environment. It is an essential skill for handling complexity and we all know our world has become a lot more complex. So I think we need some sort of a new renaissance. We need to revisit what we know from a different angle and change the paradigm. We need to break down silos and build empathy for fields other than the ones we specialize in. If we are to build a better future with a circular economy, or even better, a regenerative one, then it is absolutely essential that we understand how others function, how other parts of the system operate, how we interact with each other, how we influence each other, so we can create better solutions. Back in the days, people like Leonardo da Vinci were polymath. You find their works in arts, physics, biology, or technology. They had a deeper understanding of many fields rather than specializing in just one. And to some extent, this is something we need to get back to. We need to break down silos and learn to better think in systems. Now, unlike what happened in the previous Renaissance, 
The new paradigm we will build should reconnect us with nature rather than placing us above it or outside of it. After all, we humans are nature too. We belong to it and we need to better understand our place in it in order to improve the current situation. There is a lot of wisdom in nature and we ought to look at it more often and get inspired by it to solve our problems. Sustainable innovation inspired by nature is also called biomimicry. Simply put, biomimicry means mimicking life. It's about looking at nature and extracting its wisdom to try and solve challenges in a sustainable way. And in many ways, nature should be our reference. What would it look like if we could harness the sun's energy the way nature does with photosynthesis? transforming CO2 and water into usable energy by only using biodegradable and renewable components. Artificial photosynthesis is on its way, not yet with biodegradable components though. Here's another interesting example. Did you know that nature still holds the record for the toughest ceramics out there? There is a sea snail called abalone that creates its shell from elements surrounding it in the water. It builds it at ambient temperature, and that shell is a ceramic that is twice as tough as our most technical ones. And ours require mining and far more energy to produce. So how about we make nature our benchmark for our designs? Biomimicry is not always complicated, and I'll give you a simple example. Millions of birds die every year from crashing into windows because they see a prolongation of the sky in their reflection. Ornilux is a product that is solving this problem through a simple biomimetic application. Did you know that spiders weave into their webs a chemical that is highly UV reflective? Well, it turns out that birds see UV light and that makes the spider webs highly visible to them and therefore they don't crash in them and don't destroy them. Ornilux windows are inspired from this. They consist of an added layer with a UV reflective pattern on it so that birds don't crash into the windows while we, not seeing UV light, still see through the window as if it was a regular one. Another smart implementation from nature's wisdom is sharklet a synthetic surface which tackles the problem of bacterial growth. The product is inspired from shark skin. Scientists were wondering why some very slow moving sharks did not get any organisms growing on their skin. They found out it was due to a structural pattern on the skin that makes it uncomfortable for bacteria and other organisms to grow on it. And sharklet is using a similar pattern that can be applied on surfaces in hospitals, for instance, to avoid germs growth. Aside from products, there is a lot we can learn from nature about organizations and leadership. We can, for instance, look at how effective superorganisms like bees and ant colonies function, or take, in, take inspiration from the ballet of starlings those birds that gracefully dance in the skies with thousands of individuals flying close to each other without ever crashing and no leader structuring the group. Some of the principles behind those superorganisms are at the core of the extreme efficiency of companies like Burtzog, a neighborhood nurses organization in the Netherlands that counts over 15,000 nurses and not a single manager. As you see, there is much to learn from nature. And biomimicry is an essential tool to not only create better solutions, but also better narratives. We're all naturally attracted by nature, fascinated by it. When we're in nature, we get a sense of well-being. We just need to learn to reconnect with it. In a workshop with some other design students, I started the session by asking them to close their eyes and imagine their life 30 years from now. I wanted them to picture how they dreamed it would look like, how they would want to live. When they shared their vision, guess how many mentioned anything related to technology? 
zero. Many refer to slow living and being close to nature. So how about we use technology as an enabler of the future we want, as something that actually supports our well-being, rather than something we use to pursue some vain goals, forgetting about the bigger picture? There are three things I would like you to take away from this talk. One, tell better stories. Challenge trends. Change the narrative to make it positive. Two, build more empathy. Not only because it's good for society, but also because this skill allows us to better handle complexity and thinking systems. Three, reconnect with nature and learn from it to solve your challenges. Now, go out and create the future you actually want to live in. Thank you.